marvelous friendship that he my, uh, had with with Marilyn on that movie was uh, he came back and he was raving about her as the most uh, receptive uh, person that he ever acted with. He said she would would uh, she would listen and she would give you something, you know. Uh, he, he, he just thought she was heaven. Oh, God. So, Boy, and what was, a pair. They both were troubled people, weren't they? Yes, sir. Why did he go to an analyst, Brooks? Um, well, he felt, and this has been disputed by quite a few of his friends, uh, that this was, he frequently called him a man of wisdom. And he said, you know, you go to an analyst and you, at least you learn something about yourself before you die. And um, his friends, including my mother and a lot of other people, uh, feel that uh, the analyst should have cured his drinking, cured his homosexual friends and problems, if you call that a problem. But... Uh, I didn't go to that meeting because I felt that, that uh, nobody can really know how much good that analyst did really do for him in helping him with self-knowledge. Uh, I mean, that's, that's an intangible. He might not have been able to make a single movie without having Silverberg. Uh, to go to, or at least having the security of, of time allocated every week. As I understand that he was bisexual, yes. and I'm wondering when, how that first developed to your knowledge uh, and your comments on that. Uh, Brooks, would you talk a little bit about it? <coughs> well, excuse me. Um, I think that sort of slowly evolved as he became I mean, he had affairs and children and, uh, I mean, abortion, and, um, um... In other words, a heterosexual life, heterosexual life was a big part of him. That was the, the beginning. I think towards the end, he veered completely away from women towards men, particularly at the time of, of, uh, the awful time after Freud, when he was unemployed for four years and terribly, terribly depressed. But I can go into that when we talk about Freud. We will later Freud. if you want to talk about Freud. Uh, you know. But uh, I, 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 he told me that he didn't think he would ever get married uh, because it would take away too much. It was unfair. It would be unfair to marry. It would take away from his dedication to his work. He would be away for months, like to travel. So it would be two separate people and it just couldn't last. And I guess he felt more uh, freedom and and, uh, and and less vulnerable uh, with men than he did uh, with women. With women. Listen, I want to go on while I got you in the clutches here to uh, the Defector, which was his last picture. I mentioned in my little summary tonight that it wasn't the most successful. I don't think it was, but apparently he didn't use a double. And there's a strange story you have to tell there, isn't it? Well, <clears throat> yeah, because uh, well, there was a reason for that. He hadn't worked for four years, and uh, after Freud, and he was very anxious to show uh, that he still had strength that he used to have before. Like he jumped from the bridge into the water and did all kinds of things. Um, and he also insisted on, and this is in the winter, everybody's in fur coats, he also insisted on swimming down the bayou. But unfortunately the current took him away and the coast got cut or whatever they call it. Down the the current is the current. It's strong. And the boat had to get him grappling. career for him to uh, complete the picture without any problem. In other words, uh, Liz had put up a million dollar bond. She did not say that, that he would finish that picture. 
and he did, and showed that he had his strength and bill acting ability, and, and Olivier gave him a big party in London, and he was signed, I think, to do Reflections, which after he died, Marlon did instead. Yeah. Uh, so he was, and he was, it was, it was like a rebirth, basically. And then he died. That's what he said, yes. It wasn't too long after he finished that he died, was it? No.